Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Natasha's Law. Um, this is a law that is coming into practice from the 1st of October 2021, so it is very, very soon. So hopefully we can clarify everything that you need to know about the law and whether it applies to you basically and hopefully clear up any questions because I know a lot of people have messaged me regarding this and wanting more information on it as to whether it applies to them. So hopefully we will be able to answer all those questions today. We're going to start by just going over what Natasha's Law is because there will be plenty of people that don't actually know what it is which is completely fine. Then we're going to be talking about the different types so pre-packed, non-pre-packed and pre-packed for direct sale because Natasha's Law only applies to pre-packed for direct sale so obviously if your items aren't that then it won't apply to you a lot of things it won't be affected um so for me i'm likely not going to be affected from what i can tell um so if you're a baker that does similar things to me then you might find that you're not affected but we will be clarifying that all um and then lastly we're going to go through an faq style section which is some questions that i found on this website I will confirm all the websites in the description just in case people want to have a look, check the answers. Um, I have used things like government websites, the Food Allergen Agency, all official places so that hopefully the information is as accurate as possible. But, you know, I am human. I may make mistakes. So if there is anything that you consider to be wrong or that you disagree with, then just let me know in the comments and I can send you any links or you can maybe educate me on it because like I say, I don't know everything, but hopefully I can answer as many questions or provide you with as much information as possible. So rant over, now we're gonna get into what Natasha's Law is. So I have all my notes in front of me, so I'm sorry if I look down, I just wanna make sure that I'm actually providing you with the right info. So Natasha's Law was something that came into practice this year, but it's been going on for about two, three years since I think 2019. And it was after a teenager passed away um, after having an allergic reaction to um, something that wasn't declared in a pre-packed item. So now her parents have been fighting to get pre-packed goods better labelled for people with allergens. I think it's like one in five people are allergic to something. So it is very, very common. And it's really important for you guys to be educated on it. I actually don't deal with any allergens um, anymore because I've just decided that it is a very important thing. And also I wouldn't want to risk it. Um, but obviously if you label your items correctly, then you could still cater for people with allergens. But the important thing about this is you're not necessarily intentionally like catering for people with allergens. Um, by labeling your products, you are catering for them without necessarily knowing. So if someone was to see something on your website, they would know whether they were allergic to it or not. You wouldn't necessarily know that they have that allergen because they are just purchasing an item the same as you would in Tesco's. You would check it for anything that you're intolerant or allergic to. So the seller wouldn't necessarily know, which is why it's so important that you label all your all of your items correctly um, because you don't necessarily know who you're selling to. So um, that is the situation that happened, like the incident that kind of triggered this law to come into place. It's been a long time coming, um, but like I say, a lot of a lot of people I don't think will be affected by it. Um, it's in regards to your allergen information, your ingredients list, and the way that you label your food. So that is Natasha's Law. Hopefully that covers it for anyone that wasn't aware of what it is. So now we're going to go on to the three different types of packaged. So one is not pre-packed, then you've got pre-packed, then you have pre-packed for direct sale. So you need to decide what your products are um, and then that will help you decide whether you actually need to follow these regulations or whether it doesn't apply to you. So non-pre-packed is food that is not packaged or in packaging before being ordered. So this could be if someone orders a brownie box from me, because my things are made to order, they order it, the allergens are provided when they order, and then I then bake the item. So it's not pre-packaged before it's sold or in packaging. Um, the in packaging, it more applies to things like cafe counters. If the item is on a counter and it is pre-packaged before it's sold, then they have to give that allergen information. It will usually be on the packet. Um, but if they have, say, a cookie on the side and then the person buys it and it is then sold, then they just have to give the allergens, which is usually on a little card in front of the item, stuff like that. Um, then you also have not pre-packed for you is um, if you are a business and you have food that is packed by one business and sold by another. So this could be 
that I supply cakes to a cafe, I would already have to give them full ingredients list because they need to know what they're selling. So they would already know, therefore it wouldn't be classed as pre-packed because that information is already given because you are kind of like distributing food um, rather than giving it directly to a customer. So you're required to give that information anyway before Natasha's Law even came into play. Then you have pre-packed, which is packaged before it's sold. So in relation to bakers, this would be more so for postals. I see loads of people do it. I don't obviously know what their labelling is like, um, but my labelling is that I make everything to order. So I don't have to give full ingredients list, but I do just because a lot of my items are gifted. So I just like to cover myself and know that they have a full ingredients list, even though they don't need it or it's not required um but if you and like a lot of these bakers that i see um they bake over the weekend and then what they do is like a drop on monday where they sell all of their brownies and obviously they're already pre-baked packaged and then what they'll do is print all the labels and stick them on on the monday and then they'll all get posted so that is classed as pre-packed but because it is distant selling you will need to look into it because there are slightly different regulations for um, distant selling but as far as I'm aware if you're doing that you need to give a full ingredients list because it is pre-packed um, before it's sold. Then there is pre-packed for direct sale which is where they are packaged at the same place that they are sold or offered to a customer so this an example of this would be say you go into Costa um, they have cookies on the side but they might have cakes that are in packaging um, or like crisps anything like that and they all have allergen labels on it with full ingredients list and that is because they are pre-packaged when then you walk up and you buy it so it's pre-packaged before it's sold so that is the clarification on that I hope that that covers it all um, I know that that's the bit that people mainly get confused on whether their stuff is classed as pre-packed or not so hopefully that clarifies that so in regards to distant selling, we're going to go over this because this will apply to most of you because it applies to me. So distant selling is either online or um, cakes in person. So an example of this is when you're selling a cake, you would give the person the allergen information. So you would check that they have no allergens when you're discussing the cake with them. So it hasn't been sold in a sense because they haven't paid you anything before you've checked all that information. So you give them the allergens, you advise them of um, all the ingredients or whatever that is used in that item when you're discussing it with them. And then you're required to also do the same when you deliver or have the cake collected. This can be done orally, it can be done in the form of a sticker, um, or it can be done by a formal label or say on your website, you might have that information. I have all that information on my website for my postals so that people can see it before they even order. So that is what's required for cakes. Um, you're not required to have a full ingredients list because it is, although it is pre-packed and it's in a box before they get it, it's classed as distance selling because it is ordered online or through Facebook, Instagram, etc. Um, so it's just an allergen list that is needed. There's no full ingredients list that's needed. It's not affected by the new regulations as far as I can see. Obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and the allergens have to be provided before it's ordered and also when it's delivered slash collected. Um, what it mainly distance selling applies to um, is cakes, postals, school lunches, catering, as long as they're not pre-packed before sold. So those are some examples. Um, there's a bit of confusion on things like deli counters, but as far as I'm aware, if something is um, sort of prepared, if that makes sense. So an example is Subway, they would prepare a sandwich and then it's sold. So then you can then package it um, and it's not classed as pre-packed because they have bought it before it was packaged. That's the consensus that I get hopefully that clarifies it for you um in regards to who's going to check this this is going on to the FAQs that we have Th this is going to be enforced by your environmental health officers so this is the person that comes to inspect you if you haven't had your inspection yet it might be something that they mention especially because it's coming into play so quickly like in the next week so they will add this to their inspections they'll discuss it with you when they come and inspect your premises and if you already have had your inspection and got five stars whatever you got this will be something that they bring up at their kind of renew ones because you do have regular inspections even after you've got your hygiene rating and it's also something that they can enforce so if they believe that you're not 
um, taking the relevant steps to enforce it yourself, then they can then escalate it and report you or whatever they need to do in order for you to then comply or be disciplined for not complying with those regulations. So now we're on to the FAQ section. So I'm hoping that this clarifies any questions that you have. Like I say, if you have any more, just let me know down below. So just to confirm, it comes into play from the 1st of October 2021. So that is next week, as far as I'm aware, um, or it might be Saturday. It's it's soon. Um, I can't think when this video is coming out that when it will be. But yeah, 1st of October. So it's within the next few days. Um, what is pre-packed food? So as we clarified, um, pre-packed for direct sale is where they are packaged at the same place that they are sold to the customer. What are the allergens that you need to disclose? So you should know these from all of your allergen training that you did, but if you want me to just go over it, these are the ones that you need to make sure you are labeling. So it's cereals containing gluten, brackets wheat, then you have crustaceans, e.g. crab, prawns, etc eggs, fish, peanuts, soybeans, otherwise disclosed as soya, um, milk, nuts, uh, which is nuts is tree nuts, not um, peanuts is separate. Then that clarifies as almonds, hazelnuts, cashews, etc. And they need to be named when they're labelled. So you can't just put contains nuts. Um, my stickers have tree nuts on them. So what I do is I tick tree nuts and then I write in the other section what that actually is because someone might have an allergen um, or allergic reaction to almonds but they're fine with hazelnuts so you need to clarify which one is actually in your bakes then there is celery mustard sesame seeds sulfur dioxide or sulfates uh lupin and molluscules i feel like i think that's how it's pronounced um which is mussels um so that is the 14 allergens that you have to disclose. There are also um, some allergens that you can voluntarily disclose. So if they aren't in the list of 14 allergens, you can do your own risk assessment as to whether they would be contained in your bakes and then you can voluntarily disclose. So this can be in the form of um, a disclaimer or it can be a formal list. So you I do it on my bakes just so that it covers me, um, but I put produced in a kitchen that handles milk, eggs, um, gluten, wheat, meat, because then if someone is vegetarian, even if they're not allergic, they're aware that it's produced in a kitchen that handles those products and then they can decide whether they want to order or not. Um, in regards to new products, adding new products to your website or your menu, whatever it might be, you are required as part of your management plan. This is the HACCP. Don't hold me to that. I can't remember the abbreviation, but that's um, your management plan. It's very different depending on councils. I didn't have to do one of these as far as I'm aware, but certain councils do make you do it. It really just depends. Um, but this is your management plan as to how you do risk assessments, allergens, all of that. And you should know what is exactly in your bakes, in your recipes. Um, this comes in different forms. Mine was just a allergen list for all of my recipes, but other people have something more in depth. So don't be alarmed if you haven't done a full um, management plan because some councils don't require it. But like I say, you are required to update your allergen list as and when. It's your responsibility that if you bring out a new product, you need to update that. If you don't, then you aren't following the regulations. It's as simple as that. Um, so what foods come under prepack for direct sale? This is just a simplified list to hopefully give you a few ideas as to whether you need to potentially look into doing this. It might be that you're still not coming under that threshold, but it just means that these are some examples that you think, right, maybe I'm included in this bracket of people that need to comply so then I can do some more research. So uh, takeaway and food stores that prepare in advance, because if you're busier, you might prepare for things in advance and package them and then it would be classed as pre-packed. Um, there's mobile food trucks. Supplying to a business requires a full ingredients list, e.g. CAF. So you should already be doing a full ingredients list if you're doing that. Um, deli counters, e.g. things like Subway. You need to check whether you're required because if you, um, like I gave that example earlier, if you package the item before it's sold, then it's classed as pre-packed. But if you're packaging it for the customer after they've already bought it, then it's not pre-packed. So you need to check whether you're included in that bracket. 
Then the last thing is how the labels look. I will put an example here because this is what I found on the food allergen website. So this is the guidance that I've found. Um, but as far as I'm aware, you do not have to put any percentages on this label. I do see some people doing this already for postals and I'm not sure what the regulations are on that. I don't know if it's because a lot of them are produced in warehouses and then they are posted from say the shops. I don't know if there's regulations on that, um, which is slightly different to being a home baker rather than more of an industrial one. So again, you need to look it up depending on your situation. Um, but as far as I'm aware, all you have to do is state full ingredients. So like milk, eggs, butter, etc. And then for um, the ingredients that contain allergens, you need to, so say if you put butter on there in brackets, you'll need to have milk and then you need to either have it in bold italics or say red in a different colour so that people can pick it out of a list um, and it kind of stands out. So it's got to be emphasised in some way for it to comply. They do advise that the labels are typed because people's handwriting can be messy. So if it is messy, then someone could say that they couldn't tell what it said therefore it wasn't disclosed or um your labeling wasn't sufficient and like i said percentages as far as i'm aware aren't needed and you also aren't required as far as i'm aware to do the ordering this is the same as the percentages usually people that do the percentages also do this and that is where you label from the highest quantity to the least so say it's got the highest amount of flour in it then you would put that first and then you would descend to the ingredients that have the least quantity in that recipe or in that item. Um, but again, I couldn't see any guidance on that saying that it was required, so I don't believe that it is. Um, I looked at examples of labels like I showed you and it was literally just full ingredients with the allergens. So that is what the label should look like. And that is pretty much it. Um, I'm hoping that that covers everything um if you have any questions do let me know but from what i can see it is very simple um it's literally if you pre-pack your goods before they're sold um then you need to give a full ingredients list and allergen list and if you don't then nothing changes um for you as a seller so I'm hoping that clarified and I'm hoping that was as simple as I thought it was for you guys because so many people have asked me about it so fingers crossed that clarifies it all for you um so yeah like I said let me know if you have any questions if you haven't already please like and subscribe and if you have any updates on Natasha's Law wherever it affects you then please let me know down below because I would love to hear about other businesses because I'm obviously in the baking industry so for me personally it doesn't affect me very much but if you are in a catering industry of some sort then do let me know and then it just helps other people that are watching this video as to whether it applies to them so just let us know in the comments because it might be helpful so yeah um i hope that was helpful and i will see you in my next video bye